Hello and welcome back to another Blender video. This time around I'm going to show you how to animate a single image that does not need to be taken into any other graphic software and edited or cut out or turned into layered objects that we then work with one by one. So it's going to be one image. We're going to import it as a plane. We're going to subdivide that plane, add an armature to control it, parent the armature to the image, and then just go through and add a few keyframes. So here we go. We're going to go to File, New, and 2D Animation. So we have that white background with the camera looking straight at it. I'm going to go to File, Import Images as Planes. If you don't have this enabled, that's an add-on. You would just go into Edit and Preferences, go to Add-ons and search for Images. It will come up and then you can just check it. That will be a thing. Now I'm going to go to my desktop, pick a tree, happy little tree in a field. And what I'm going to do is just get these branches to sort of blow in the wind. And to do that, I'm going to first subdivide this thing. So we're going to go into edit mode and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to choose subdivide. Now I need a much denser mesh than this if I want to control individual branches. So let's open up the options here for that subdivide. How about we subdivide it 50 times? That ought to give us the control we're looking for. And now I'm going to go back into object mode and I'm going to add the armature that we're going to use to control this. So shift A, armature, let's scale that down and put it in the tree. About like that. And now I'm going to go into edit mode because I want to work inside this armature, but I need more bones. So I'm going to shift D to duplicate that one and rotate it. Grab it and put it all about there. Now that seems a little bit big, so I'm going to scale it. And I'm also going to scale this one while I'm at it. Don't need things to control that much. And I'm going to shift D and duplicate again and rotate it. There we go. We got different sides of our tree. Now, I've got three different bones in my armature, and I want to be able to select them in the uh, properties panel over here. So it would be nice if I had some names. I'm going to click on this little green running man here. That's the Object Data Properties tab. I'm going to go to Viewport Display and check Names. And now my names show up next to my bones. And I'm also going to check In Front while I'm at it. Uh, just to make sure the bones are always in front of the mesh and I don't have to go digging for them in the background, which shouldn't happen in this model anyway. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to parent the mesh to the bones. So I'm going to click on the mesh that has my image on it, shift click on the armature, press control P, and I'm going to do this with envelope weights. I want the weights to be right around the bones. I don't want it to affect any other part of the image further out. Um, and now if I have the armature selected and I go into pose mode and I rotate or move any of these, you can see parts of the image are moving with that bone. That's what we want. And um, I might want it to affect a little bit more than just that. So I'm going to go into weight painting and open up the area of influence around those bones. And here's how you do that. With a bone selected in pose mode, you're going to want to go up to the edit menu and uh, unlock the lock object modes which is going to allow you to select this mesh here in the background while you're still in pose mode and then change to weight paint. And once you do that, you can start painting uh, how this bone is affecting the mesh. But as I click and drag, nothing appears to be happening. And that is because in this version of Blender, um, you don't get to see your weight paints unless you are in solid shade mode. So if I go here, now you can see the weight painting. Red is a high, heavy influence. Yellow is less, green is less, blue is less, and dark blue is none at all. So now I can paint and tell Blender where I want this bone to influence the, the parts of the image. Um, that's not very helpful if I can't see the image though. So I like to split my window. That way one of them can be weight painting with solid shade mode on, and the other one can actually show me my image. And now, I can see the bones on the image. I can see the bones over here in the weight painting and I can understand kind of where, where I am in this image by where I am over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my strength way down. And as I paint, I'm adding a little bit 
of color to the weight. And if I paint over that, it gets a little darker. If I paint over that, it gets a little darker. Eventually, we're going to get into the yellows and then the reds. And that gives me a lot more control. Let me just undo all that because that was a little extreme. And the tip of this bone, just extend a little bit past it in both directions should give us the kind of control we're looking for. So right here at the tip of this bone, I'll extend a little bit past in both directions, kind of in an arc like the tree and a little bit back, not too much. And I'll make that outer edge a little heavier than the inner edge. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other two bones while I'm here. And this is where naming them is really useful because I can see this one here is called bone and bone is right here in the list. Makes for a quick and easy grab. I can see um, if I center my cursor kind of on the tip of that bone, I'll grab a lot of those branches and then kind of sweep up into the right a little bit. Um, I want to be careful not to get clouds or sky though because that would end up looking kind of weird. So I'll go this way. We'll paint that fairly heavy. I'll come down this way and then sort of fade that in down here. And same for the last bone, which is called bone one. And again, I can have some influence on those branches for a little bit further out, like right in this area. Not a whole lot up here, because I'm gonna get into the clouds, maybe just a little in that area. And then a lot more down below. And that looks pretty good. Now what I wanna do is back off how much influence the uh, inside center of the bone has because that's a little intense and so what I'm going to do is set the weight to zero and increase the strength just a little bit and this works kind of like an eraser I'll just back off that intensity a bit and I'll do the same on the other two bones and there we go all right let's animate this I'm going to close that window whoops I'm going to try to I never do seem to grab those the very first try. All right, we're gonna go back into pose mode. Whoops, it would help if I had my armature selected first. Pose mode, good. I'm going to switch this down here to dope sheet. It was in grease pencil mode because this was a 2D animation, so it's expecting a grease pencil. We just didn't give it one. And it appears that I've already got some keyframes. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just move out, well, let's say this far, <clears throat> grab a bone, and I'm going to rotate all these slightly to the right, just ever so slightly. And oops, did I not hit rotate? I guess not. I'm going to keyframe that. Oh, you know, I should have keyframed each of them as I was doing that, and I didn't. Just pressing I to insert a keyframe, tracking location, rotation, and scale. We'll jump out here another 040, I guess. And we'll keep going to the right a little bit more. And, oh, again, I didn't add the keyframes. <clears throat> okay, we'll jump out another 40 and we'll start swinging back to the left. This time I'm intentionally not adding the keyframes because um, it's pretty easy. So just go click, I click, I. All right, let's jump out another 40. Let's swing back to the left a little bit more. Now, without playing with these and tweaking the keyframes exactly, um, it's going to be hard to tell until I play this how this looks, but I have a good feeling about it. Let's go ahead and just scrub through. All right, we don't appear to have a keyframe here on zero. The other ones are moving nicely. All right, let's drop a keyframe for the bones here. Now, I don't want it to be the same as 40. So I'm going to actually rotate a little bit to the left. on each one of these and go back through and make sure I set that keyframe. All right, now if I scrub through, what do we see? Okay, we're seeing some movement. That looks like it might work. Uh, this animation ends at frame 160 right now, so let's go ahead and set that to 160 and 
play it. I'm even going to hide the armature while it's playing and zoom out a little bit. And there we go. Without changing anything else about this image, I have a tree gently swaying in the wind. And that's all for this video. Tune in next time for more.